What's up, y'all? It's your boy Ruben. You know what it is, and uh, we're just gonna dive right into it. I know it's been a minute, but the dead period is about over. Football season's about to commence next week, Thursday, and uh, I haven't talked much about the Cowboys this off season, and I'm, I don't want to talk about some of my thoughts with the Cowboys because they haven't done a lot, but over the last few months, there's a kind of accumulation of things that there's plenty to talk about. Um, starting with part of the reason there aren't there wasn't a lot was we didn't make any major moves. The big thing was we lost Randy Gregory, which uh, um, I don't think. While I I do think Randy Gregory was a was a major asset to us last year. Um, what a fucking dick, basically. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the way he did us, um, he left due to some verbiage that could have uh, nullified his, I guess, his, the guarantees in his contract. And he took the same exact contract with the Broncos after we stood by him during throughout all the various suspensions. I've touched on that before, but we're not going to get too deep into that. So a lot of people were upset we didn't make any major moves because we lost a lot. We did lose a lot. We lost, we lost Leo Collins. We lost um, Amari Cooper. And... Um, we go into this season, and it's going to be an interesting season. Now, we did make a series of smaller moves that I really liked. Um, we did pick up Dante Fowler, who, if you follow, um, you know, I'm also a big Jaguar fan, so I'm very familiar with Dante Fowler. And I've never thought he was like the ace. You know, he kind of flamed out in, in Atlanta uh, after having good seasons with L.A. Um, I've seen him, you know, get double-digit sacks here in Jacksonville. And my thoughts on the Dante Fowler signing was it's a good one. Um, we don't need him to be the ace pass rusher, which is where I think he struggles. If you understand um, what I mean, right? So he doesn't, he, he's not the guy to gain, the teams are going to be game planning for a week in and week out. We have Demarcus Lawrence for that. We have Michael Parsons for that. Um, so it leaves Dante Fowler a lot of freedom. And what I also like about it is Dan Quinn employing, you know, that, that Leo position, we could be sending, you know, him from any direction. He was a, he's a very decent uh, run stuffer, but we're going to be playing a lot of, you know, zone coverage and a lot of, you know, you play the run all the way to the passer. So if we can get a reemergence from Demarcus Lawrence, um, I know he's up there in age, but if he can just, you know, continue being disruptive and Michael Parsons continues to be his potential defensive player of the year uh, self that he was last year, um, Dante Fowler can flourish in this kind of role. Uh, I like, you know, I've been beating the drum for Neville Gallimore for some years, uh, for a couple of years now since we drafted him. I think this is the year that maybe we see something from him. Uh, we drafted Sam Williams, who's another big, strong guy uh, that we can add to the rotation. We kept Dorrance Armstrong. The other guy that a lot of, I think, um, kind of went under the radar a little bit was Anthony Barr. We ended up signing him. I know a lot of people are going to think, you know, well, hey, he's up there in age. Minnesota cut him. Uh, all true. But the thing that intrigues me about Anthony Barr is, if you guys remember, he came out of UCLA. He was a double-digit sack guy at UCLA. I believe UCLA was running a 3-4. I don't know if they do still now, but they were running a 3-4. He was a 3-4 backer where he was he was tasked with pass rush. And his final two seasons, he had double-digit sacks. And uh, completing, I think, his college collegiate career with like 23 and a half sacks or something like that. He, I always felt like he was kind of miscast in Minnesota. While they do play a four three, and we, I, you know, for all intents and purposes, we are going to employ a, a four three. Um, there, Minnesota would play more cover two, where we kind of play a, a cover three scheme. It doesn't really change how we use them, how we use the linebackers. Except in this scheme, they have what's called a Leo position, uh, which is basically typically a bigger guy that can pass rush. And um, and you typically rotate those kind of guys. What I like about Anthony Barr is I think he can give you the same thing, like the kind of dimension that Michael Parsons gives you. Whereas he can play good coverage um, in the middle of the field and pass rush. And I think that's something we that Minnesota failed to tap into when he was in Minnesota. They kind of turned him in just a, a basic drop off the ball type of linebacker. So 
I think that versatility and it's going to bode well for the defense because now you don't know if Anthony Barr is coming or Michael Parsons is coming. And either way, you're always going to have good pass rushers coming between Anthony Barr, Michael Parsons, Dante Fowler, Armstrong, and um, um, Demarcus Lawrence. Sorry. Brain fart. So I actually think we're going to be pretty decent defensively. Uh, I do still have my worries about the secondary. Um, hopefully, Kelvin Joseph bounces back this year, uh, shows some things. Um, what's his name? Uh, Anthony Brown, as far as I know, is still the starter on the other side, which is, which again, I've always said, I'm fine with Anthony Brown. He's a decent player. The only, pro the only beef I have with Anthony Brown is that he, he's not great against elite talent or, or elite, um, speed. So case in point, he kept getting roasted by like Deshaun Jackson and the likes of those kind of guys in, um, in the Las Vegas Raiders game. He got burnt in the Tampa Bay game. Like those kind of guys give him problems. But the the wishy washy other types, you know, uh the the, the 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 nobodies, which you know Trayvon Diggs is gonna feel, you know, the best receiver typically. Those other guys, because not every team has legitimate second, third receivers, uh he can he can play all right with them. Malik Hooker is going to feel, hold down the four to free safety and um, Curse should be at the other safety spot. I think this is a kind of our best safety tandem that we've, we've had this year. But I think ultimately the secondary has some holes. The front seven, I love what we're doing with Vanderus. I, I can't wait to see what Jabril Cox can bring. Um, I think we're really good in the front seven. We just have some holes in the uh, secondary and even Trayvon Diggs, we need him to lock down that that pension for gambling so much and giving up too many big plays. I want to see the picks, but I don't want to see the big plays that he's giving up either. So hopefully we can find a happy balance there because I don't expect them to pick off the ball 11 times again. Um, O-line, Tyron Smith went down. Big. It is a big deal, but it's sort of like we've been here, guys. Um, kind of feels like Tyron Smith's on his last legs with us. Uh, we did draft Tyler Smith, but he definitely wasn't game ready. I hate the fact that we're going to have to rely on him now to probably hold down the, the most important left tackle spot and not, you know, hopefully Tyron Smith can still, you know, be there for him uh, mentally to, you know, bounce questions off of. But this kid was so raw. Uh, I, I really wish we could have left him at left guard so he can learn, you know, how to do things and then maybe eventually take over because I don't think he's ready. Uh, as of this video, they were looking into trading for a right tackle uh, from the Jets. Uh, Chuma Idoga, I think his name is. He's not anything special. It's really just kind of for depth purposes. Uh, last year, our line was in disarray. We had Zach Martin playing right tackle at one point. So the great news is we have Zach Martin. He's always going to be reliable. But uh, Beatis, um McGovern, and then that that is that left side of the line is going to be a problem. And I think the Cowboys know it. That's why they were emphasizing that I think we're going to do a lot of a lot more two tight end sets, uh, which is probably smart. But are we going to be able to run the ball like we need to run the ball to be able to stay in those formations? Is that going to have time to deliver the ball on third down the way he needs to? With all that being said, I saved the best for last. And I know we lost some more. I have all the faith in the world in, in um, CeeDee Lamb. And I think Michael Gallup's a huge sleeper in fantasy, guys. So, you know, just let y'all know. My concern, ultimately, is save the best for last. Dak Prescott, this is the year that he has to. This is why we pay him the big bucks. It's time for him to become a force multiplier and leader of this team. Not to say that he was never a leader. But this is the season that he has to earn his paycheck. It's time for him to overcome the online issues, the losses uh, of talent, because we've always had a surplus of talent. It's not like we are devoid of talent even now without the injuries, even though we uh, lost a lot of people. But Dak Prescott is supposed to, when you pay a guy $40 million a year, he's supposed to be the kind of guy that can overcome this. And now he's a year removed from the major injury I expect him to rise and shine. 
Um, I expect Zeke to have a bounce back. I, I don't think he's going to look like lead the league in rushing Zeke, guys. So let's tighten up on those expectations. But if he can get us 1,000 yards, get us five to eight touchdowns, maybe even double digits if we get in the red zone enough, and be supplemented with Tony Pollard, third down, and we also found another kid, Turpin, we have some explosiveness, but I wonder if we're going to have the ability to use it with the way the offensive line looks. I think we're going to have to play a lot more dink and dunk and kind of protect Dak, even though I put expectations on him. But on third down, it, it, there's no excuses. He's going to have to come through. So we'll we'll see what happens. Those are my thoughts, guys. I mean, fantasy season's coming up. Let me know what y'all think. What are y'all drafting? Um, this is a different year guys i mean outside of jonathan taylor which i'm hearing is a consensus number one i think a lot of spots are you know up for grabs let me know what y'all think who are y'all drafting two three four and five um and i'll let y'all know how my drafts go uh, i got one tonight actually shortly after this video and um i'm working out another one for sometime next week all right get at me hit hit me in the comments Definitely make sure you like, subscribe uh, for more videos, all right? Peace.